Welcome to my channel, Outside the Levees. I'm Jared Serenay, and today I'm hunting speckle belly geese with the Louisiana man himself, Mr. Kendall Frederick. Our buddies at Vermilion Waterfowl put us on a phenomenal goose hunt. Then we headed back to the camp to throw down on some firewood camp cooking. Now let's get it started. Good morning, good morning. We're right here in the heart of Cajun rice country, Gay Dawn, Louisiana. We are surrounded by rice fields and crawfish ponds, and if you know anything about that, it's phenomenal duck and goose habitat. Now today, we're gonna pretty much leave the ducks alone and just focus on speckle belly geese. I'm excited, I really don't get to goose hunt much, so this is gonna be a unique opportunity for me. I wanna wish all my subscribers a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. If you're not subscribed, I hope Santa Claus brings you a big lump of coal. Nah, but subscribing is the best way to keep up with the channel, so I appreciate everyone who clicked that subscribe button. If you've noticed on the last few videos, we're bringing the cooking back, so leave me a comment below. Let me know what y'all think about that. If that's something y'all like seeing, we'll keep doing it. Now, this whole trip was put together by Kendall Frederick. He invited me to come. We've been wanting to meet up. He's got an amazing channel on here. I'm gonna put a link in the description below. If you like Louisiana culture, hunting and fishing, there's really no one who does it better. So go visit him once you watch this video. All right, so now we're gonna get on out of this camp, get these trucks packed up and get on this hunt. Hopefully we're gonna get a few this morning. It's nice and chilly. What is it, 42 degrees this morning? Oh, puppy oh. pup. Okay. That's the real, that's the, the real bread winner right there. <laughs> Beautiful morning. Look at this sunrise, guys, out in front. Death Alley behind us. We just hunted a couple hours and uh, not too, too much flying. Seen a few speckle bellies, a lot of snow geese in the area. So where we're hunting here has got a lot of water and we're gonna move to a dry field. You know, they were saying that this water by there being no wind and no motion on the water, it looks a little suspicious to geese. So we're gonna try to get to a dry field where things look, uh, you know, just not, not as easy for them to figure it out. So we're making a move. These boys wanna kill some geese. No okay, Fred's ready, boy, look at him. Go get them, guys. We're gonna go get in the other blind and see what we can get. How many decoys are we putting out? Uh, 18. 18, something simple. Yeah. What you like about doing a small spread like that? Ah, uh, pick it up faster. That way, <laughs> when you when you're not here, you don't have decoys sitting out. You know. Yeah. So. We like to pick up and put out every day. Do you find that you have as much success with a small spread as a big one? Way better. Way better. Just with a because, small? With a small. Just because it, 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 it appears on them. A lot of these birds are passing over this field every day. And if you leave your decoys out, you know, they kind of get used to them and go around. We like to deploy, you know, 18 to 24. We have way better luck calling the birds in with, with, with a fresh, fresh set. All right, so here's the setup. We've got these speckle belly goose decoys here. That's the blind there. So as you can see, a very low profile blind. We're out in a rice field. I know speckle bellies like to land on in here, eat whatever little bit of rice. And you know, they got fresh shoots going up out the ground. And they like to get in here and eat that, fill their little bellies. So we're gonna go get in that blind there and try to work them in down here. So you can see, once you're down in there, they're not gonna see you. Believe it or not, K-Fred is somewhere down in there. Let's see if we can locate him. There he is, there he is. <laughs> Found him. Get ready. <laughs> 
Mark, Mark. Ook weer, ook goed, zie ik al. Fred, what you think about cooking tonight, man? What you thinking you're gonna cook? I think we're gonna do a pot roast. We'll stuff the breasts. We'll season them real good. Uh, I think it's gonna be good. We're gonna cook it on that old wood burning stove. I think it'll be a good time. What you cooking? Yeah, well Fred's taking the whole bird, so I'm gonna take the gizzard, maybe the heart, and do something with that. It's gonna be good though, it's gonna be good. Let's see what we got coming. That was awesome. They worked and worked and worked on those birds and uh, got them to come. You know, they and they finally locked up. I was like, are they gonna call the shot? I heard them saying, ah! <laughs> I heard them saying something down there. Got a lot of and uh, <laughs> we'll take care of that. I heard them saying something, but I wasn't sure if they were calling the shot, man. So I hurried up, jumped up, shot at one. But uh, we got five in the blind now. Great dog work. I think we're gonna get some more. <laughs> Shoot or not? Shoot or not? Okay. So as you saw, there was a bigger group behind the two that came in. It, it was it was a tough call, man. You know, sometimes you have to take the bird in hand. We definitely would have loved to wait for the big group, but there was no guarantee, so Jack called the shot. So let us know, what would you have done? Should we have waited? Should we have let the big group come in? I don't know. You know, you, I don't know what answer is right. All I know is we shot and we were able to get one bird out of it. If we had waited, maybe we got none. So leave me a comment down below. What you think? What should we have done? <laughs> So that amazing calling was done by our buddies Jack and Whitney with Vermilion Waterfall. And we want to send a very, very special thanks to them for having us along, hooking us up with the camp. All in all, just a great experience. Thank you so much, K-Fred, for putting this together, for being willing to help me out with my channel. Let's see if we can get some extra views on something like this. So now it's time to head back to the camp and do what we do best.
Alright, well hey, what an awesome hunt. Now we're back at the camp. And if you watch this channel, you know I kind of like to hang out at the camp and cook a lot. Please, 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 if you haven't already, go subscribe to Kendall Frederick, K Fred, I call him, on YouTube. The channel is called Kendall Frederick. So go on YouTube, type in Kendall Frederick. If you already subscribed, you know what a great guy he is and what a great representative of South Louisiana culture. If you know another thing about K Fred, you know we back at the camp and he's cooking. So he's gonna go ahead and pot roast some whole geese. So I was like, well, what can I do, you know? Well, I took the gizzards and the hearts out of the geese. We got that here. I'm gonna make what we call in the New Orleans area, a dirty rice. Now, once you get over here to Cajun country, they call it a rice dressing. That's just one of those little funny differences between us New Orleans folks and the real Cajuns over here. So what I got here is the gizzards, the hearts, and one other little ingredient that you have to have when you come to Cajun country. This is smoked pork tassa. What they do is they smoke that pork for a few hours, they season it real good with Cajun seasoning, and you could add that to about any dish to really, really bring it to life and give it that good Cajun flavor. So I'm gonna chop all this up, I'm gonna cube it up the best I can, and then Jack's gonna put it in a bag and he's gonna work it down real good. So, you just wanna get that, you know, I guess that's kind of like a silver skin, you wanna get that off. Now with a gizzard, you want a real sharp knife. I know K Fred rocks with a sharp knife. He's let me borrow his, because they're very, very dense. And that's why we have to cook them such a long time. Get it nice and clean, and that's kind of what you're going for there. And then I'm just gonna cube that up. And that's kind of what you get. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the heart. Now the heart's a lot softer meat. It's not gonna be as hard to cut. Cube that heart up. And then we'll cube up our tasso. So I'm gonna do it to that whole tasso. I've got a bag of gizzards and hearts here, and that's all gonna get cubed up. Go back into the bag, and like I said, Jack's gonna take a tenderizing hammer and work on it a little bit, and we'll drop it in the pot. All right, so my camera's audio cut out for a little while here, so I'll walk you through what I did next. I put about two tablespoons of cooking oil in a cast iron pot on the fire. Then I diced up a whole white onion and dropped that in the pot. I went with the poblano pepper instead of a green bell pepper. I have a thing for poblano pepper, so I use them as often as possible. I grilled it first to get the skin off and to get a smoky flavor on the pepper. After I peel the skin, I dice up the poblano and drop it in the pot. Then I drop in the bag of tenderized hearts, gizzard, and tasso. Push close to the fire because I want to brown this meat real good. And you know what comes next. Right here, K. Fred. Everybody's got a Cajun seasoning they love. They tell you this one's the best, that one's the best. This is what we rocking with on outside the levees now. That in there, we just start mixing it up. So we're cooking it almost all the way through. It's gonna get crispy on the outside and we're gonna develop what we call gradu at the bottom of that pot. That's the stuff that sticks to the bottom. So when we add liquid, you stir it and that creates most of your flavor right there. We're gonna add some more K-Fred. All right, so our gizzards, our hearts, and tassos cook down pretty good. Onions and poblanos look great. I'm gonna add a little bit of chicken stock. Just enough to almost cover it. Then I wanna cover it up. And we're gonna let that cook down for about an hour. You really, really gotta cook them gizzards a while. So we're just gonna cover it up and let it cook. Let it roll, have a crown drink, and the K-Fred cook. All right, this has been covered up cooking for about 20 minutes now. It's got liquid in it, but I'm gonna go ahead and check it. Oh yeah, still got plenty of liquid. We can get it, brother. Like I said, you, these gizzards, you just got, got to take your time with them. Don't rush them. Let them cook down good, soak up all that flavor. All right, we've been cooking for about 45 minutes. Let it keep going, though. Getting where we want it. Yes, sir. All right, so here we are, Gaydon, Louisiana, cooking over an open fire. Speckle belly geese flying over. We at the camp. Man, life is good. All right, now look at K Fred's little stove he's cooking on here. Very unique. I'm kind of jealous. It's really cool. But if y'all want to see what he's cooking, I'm not going to show y'all. Y'all going to have to go on his channel and see. So as soon as you're done watching this, go ahead, type in K Fred on YouTube, and you'll have to watch his to see what he cooked. All right, so. We let it cook down for about two hours. So now I added two cups of water, one cup of rice, 
That rice is gonna soak up a lot of what's already in there, so I'm gonna add a little bit more to Cape Fred seasoning. All right, I wanna bring that up to a good boil before it simmers, so I'm gonna add a little bit more wood. Try to get that fire back going, we want that to boil, then we'll cover and let it simmer. All right, we're right towards the end. Our liquid's just about all cooked out. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of fresh parsley. And you add as much as you want. You could also do green onion. That's another good one. And that's it. That's pretty much it right there. Don't waste your gizzards. Don't waste your hearts. Chop them up. Get some tasso. Add it all and make a dirty rice. Look at that, boy. All right, well, what a long day, but a beautiful day as well. Got to spend time with my boy here, K-Fred. Like I said, go check him out. Go on YouTube, type in Kendall Frederick. Great representative of our culture down here in South Louisiana. I want you to do the honors. Check out my little... That's some pretty good looking rice dressing right here. I know y'all say dirty rice. Gizzard, heart, and tasso. Dude, look how pretty that looks. And I, mean, I garnished, that... garnished it with a pickled okra, you know? Let's see. Dude, A plus, very good. Oh, I gotta. I, can I have another bite? This you might be that. double That's dipping. yours, baby. That's, That's yours. Mine. Okay, I'm gonna double That's dip yours. it. It's my plate. So, subscribe oh my to my God, channel, dude. Outside the Levees. Do it now before you forget. Like the video and comment below. I really, really want to know what y'all hear about me doing this type of thing with K. Dude. Fred coming out, going on this hunt, linking up with another Louisiana oh legend. God. Dude, that's incredible. Thank you, my brother. Oh, Thank my God. You. So, we love y'all. Thank you, and we'll see you soon. Thank you, guys.